My nearly adult female mom died a little over a year ago. I was living with her full time before she passed. She left me a lot of money and her house. Since the house was just going to stay empty until I was done with college, my aunt on my mom's side and I talked about it and we agreed she would stay there since she's taking care of my grandma and her place was small. So I'll move back in once I finish my schooling. My dad assumed my mom left me her money and left the house to my aunt. I didn't correct him because I don't trust my dad or have a great relationship with him. I'm currently living with him, his wife Jan and her twin daughters, nearly adult, both lovely people, in a three-bedroom flat. Two months ago, he found out that my mom left me the house. I'm not sure how he found out, but he did. Since then, I haven't heard the end of it. I'm selfish for making us all stay in a tiny flat. I'm spoiled because I won't share my inheritance. I'm terrible for making the twins take out loans. You get the gist. This weekend was the twins' birthday at my grandma's house. Most of my dad's family was there. We get along great, usually. And his wife's family and some of their friends were there, along with the twins' friends. After they were done opening my present to them, they asked me if that was really it. I got them matching bracelets with their birthstones, which they loved, by the way. It got quiet and I asked them what else they were expecting. They said Jan said that I was planning on surprising them on their birthday by telling them we were moving into my mom's house and helping them with college. My grandma asked Jan if this was true and Jan started in on me again. She asked what she could do to make me stop being a witch, pull my weight, help out and be fair. I told her she could drop dead. I told her my mom died for me to get all these things she wanted me to give her daughters. I said if she wanted everything to be fair, then she should drop dead and I would share everything I had with her daughters since we would have all lost a mother. That it would be fair only after that happened. She and my dad started yelling at me and my grandma and uncle started yelling at my dad and Jan and everything was pretty much over after that. The whole ride home, my dad and Jan were getting calls and texts from family and friends telling them they were disappointed in them and I was getting lots of texts from Jan's family, the twins' friends and a few of my cousins saying I was selfish. I don't usually fight with my cousins so I'm really starting to think maybe I am being selfish and that I went too far at the twins' party. Am I the idiot? Edit. I can't live with my aunt. My grandma needs a lot of space right now and our setup has gotten the best results for her. I love my grandma, but seeing her on the brink of death sends my mind to a bad place. I tried staying the weekend once and I had a panic attack. A rare time when you can tell someone to drop dead and still be not the idiot. At your young age, I wouldn't have had the verbal creativity or emotional fortitude to advocate for myself so expertly. You are in fact a hero for ensuring your aunt has housing security as she cares for your aging grandmother, for standing up for yourself in the face of the emotional immaturity of the adults around you, and for investing in yourself. Unblock every single one of those people. They're not your family. Your family is supporting you because they love you, and don't give anyone a dime until you've figured out your motives. Cat is out of the bag and family can be the slimiest. They don't owe you. And this BS where Jan made up a story about what you were going to do and then surprised you with it? Incredible. I hope you get out as soon as you can. Yeah. Surprise them on their birthday by telling them they were moving into my house and I'm helping them with college. The sheer audacity that Jan had in attempting to coerce a kid into giving up their assets is alarming. Calling you selfish for ensuring your grandmother and her carer have what they need is textbook projection. OP, make sure your money and the house are secured. Your mom died. It's your inheritance, your house and your money. It doesn't belong to anyone but you. It's not your responsibility to take care of anyone. Your dad is a grown adult. He needs to work and get a bigger house to provide for his new family. I'm so sorry you lost your mom. I hope her memory will always be a blessing. My roommate dumped her ex-girlfriend about two weeks ago, and the ex-girlfriend took it really, really badly. Over the last two weeks, she's shown up at our apartment eight times. She stands outside and cries and knocks on the door, begging my roommate to come out and talk to her. My roommate always ignores her until she goes away. She usually stays for almost an hour. Honestly, it's really sad to listen to. So, last night my roommate wasn't home, and her ex-girlfriend came to the door. I opened the door to tell her that my roommate wasn't there, and I could see that she was intoxicated. To be fair, I don't know if she's been drinking the other time she's shown up, but once I saw that she was, I didn't feel comfortable just shutting the door on her and leaving an intoxicated girl alone outside at night. So, I let her come inside so I could call her an Uber to take her home. She was in our apartment for maybe 10 minutes in total. 
I didn't let her go into my roommate's room or touch anything. She just sat on the couch and cried while waiting for the Uber. While she was there, I texted my roommate to let her know so that she wouldn't come home to her ex-girlfriend unexpectedly being in our apartment. My roommate got mad at me for letting her in and said I should have ignored her. I explained that she was drunk and I was worried about her safety, but my roommate said that it didn't matter and it wasn't okay to reward her for showing up by letting her into our apartment. My roommate is still mad at me today and is saying that the next time the ex-girlfriend shows up, it will be my problem to deal with because she's sure I just made the whole situation worse. So, am I the idiot? Edit. The ex-girlfriend didn't do anything crazy or bad that made my roommate break up. She just wasn't that into her. You are the idiot, not your circus, not your monkey. Frankly, at this point, instead of calling an Uber, you should have been calling the cops about harassment. This is ridiculous, and even more ridiculous, that you actually let her inside. And your roommate is right. You 100% did just make it worse. Agree. You should have called the cops. You are enabling her. This is not harmless behavior. She is stalking, and you're contributing to it. Next time, slam the door shut in her face and call the cops immediately. Stop letting your lack of boundaries put others at risk. Excuse me? You make it seem like OP's decision came from a bad place. I could understand the concern for safety. In my opinion, the real idiot is the roommate. The ex had shown up so many times before and she just ignored the situation. Why didn't the roommate call the cops for harassment instead of just ignoring it? She ignored the situation and put OP in a bad position. The roommate should handle her business and not subject the people she lives with to her relationship issues. I'd be not okay if my roommate's ex kept showing up banging on the door and crying multiple times and they didn't do anything about it. I agree. Ultimately, I think OP did the best they could in a crap situation. They got the ex out to safety and alerted the roommate to avoid an unwanted confrontation. It sounds like the roommate should seriously consider legal options for keeping this person away from them before this escalates to even crazier levels. First, a little backstory. Three years ago, I, 37 female, gave birth. Since then, I've been at home raising my daughter. Now that she's older, I decided to get a part-time afternoon job so that my husband, 40, could watch over our daughter while I worked. At first, I found a job at a pastry shop, but the owner was terribly rude and I was working overtime, unpaid, every day, so I left. I've started working at a burger joint and I actually really enjoy it. The problem started when I started going to work 15 minutes earlier and leaving a little later to get to know my co-workers. Everyone was welcoming and helpful, and I felt rude leaving the second my shift was over while everyone else was staying for a bit to chat. My husband said he was okay with me going in a little early, but that's it. Yesterday, I worked until midnight. We were really understaffed, and I didn't even get my break or even drink a cup of water during my whole shift. At midnight, my manager asked me to stay for another hour, so I did. The second I entered the crew room, I heard my phone ringing. It was my husband. I grabbed my jacket and called him back. I told him I'd just gotten off work and how busy it was. He asked me if I knew where he was, and I didn't understand the question until I saw him with our toddler a minute away from my job at one in the morning. He started yelling at me and saying that I should have called him, that he was worried and that things had to change because things would get worse. He also forbade me from calling him while he's at work. He works for himself. He has an office. At some point, I tried to calm things down by apologizing for not notifying him and explaining to him that I couldn't go to the crew room because I was at the register. However, he said that he didn't accept the apology and we hadn't talked since. Am I really that much of an idiot for not notifying him of working an extra hour? P.S. My job is two blocks from our home and I walk one of the most well-lit and busier streets to get there. I get why your husband was upset. He was expecting you to be home a little past midnight and at one, you're still not there. You're not picking up your phone, it's the middle of the night, and something bad could have happened to you. The only thing he could do was come to your work to check and bring the kid with him. What was he supposed to do? Call the actual restaurant instead of taking an infant out in the middle of the night. OP, you could have said to your manager when he asked you to stay longer that you needed a minute to inform your husband. You were an hour late home at midnight. I understand he was worried. He could have, however, behaved like a normal adult, not yelling like a madman. He was most likely afraid and fear is a powerful feeling that can make people act badly. Maybe you should both act like adults and talk to each other. I'm sorry, but you are the idiot. You could have asked the manager for a break to 1. Get a darn drink of water and 2. 
Notify your husband that you're working late so he doesn't worry. You should have told your boss that you didn't have a problem with overtime, but you'd have to let your family know. I wasn't a great person in high school. My friends and I had a little clique and we weren't nice to some classmates. I tried going to college, but it wasn't for me. I got a job at a car dealership and eventually started selling cars. I'm pretty good at it, so I make a good living. My younger brother did great in university and he has a pretty good future ahead of him. After he graduated, he started working in the city and there's a club there for graduates from his university. He ran into a girl that I wasn't very nice to in high school. She's a couple of years older than him, but they started dating. I don't think she realized he was my brother. He likes that they grew up in the same town. He brought her home for Christmas. My parents had sold their home after we all moved out, so they didn't live in the same town anymore. She recognized me right away. I didn't recognize her. I guess she got past the ugly duckling part of growing up. She's very physically attractive. She's also doing well in life. She only said something once I approached her after dinner. She asked if I honestly couldn't remember her. I didn't, until she reminded me of the stuff I used to do to her. I felt sick to my stomach. I immediately apologized for everything and said that I'd been an idiot kid and that I'd grown up since then. She said that she was glad and that she accepted my apology. I sent out my wedding invitations recently and my brother RSVP'd with his plus one. I asked him who he was bringing. He said that he was bringing his girlfriend, the girl from Christmas. So I guess she never mentioned me. I kind of wanted to ask him not to bring her. Many of my old friends will be at the wedding and I don't want anything to happen. She forgave me, but I still think it's kind of shady that she never brought up our past with my brother. Would it be an idiot move if I asked him not to bring her to my wedding? You are the idiot. You don't sound like you've grown into a better person since high school as you credit yourself with. Ugly duckling phase, you're still in your mean girls phase. Let the past be the past. Also, OP, who the heck do you think he's bringing as a plus one? The girl from Christmas. Dear Lord. Girlfriend, it's his girlfriend. And what are you worried about her doing? You were the bully, not her. Yes, you are the idiot. But let me get this straight. You don't want to invite her because you think it's weird she hasn't outed you as a bully to your brother. If I were to hazard a guess, OP doesn't want to be reminded of being a bully. And if that group of friends is at the wedding, they know that something is going to happen. What if your brother marries this girl? Will you skip the wedding and cut contact? Genuinely asking. OP is surprised she hasn't outed him because that's what OP would have done. No, no, no. It's also that OP is still friends with all their fellow bullies and they don't want any incidents. You know, because even though they're a much better person and all, they still hang around with idiots and prioritize those people being at their wedding. I think that OP is afraid their friends will bully the former bullying victim again or that there might be some confrontation between them. So, OP is trying to fix it by removing the bullying victim. This basically means OP progressed from aggressor to enabler, which is kind of progress, but not enough. Agree. And soon, everyone in your family knows what a bullying idiot you were and how you continued to discriminate against and exclude her to try and keep it a secret. How do you think that plays out for you? Your chickens are coming home to roost. Better get ready to deal with the consequences of you being a garbage person. I, 28 female, am part of a group of 9 female friends. Except for another woman and me, let's call her Daisy, they don't have kids. Daisy and I had our kids 3 weeks apart. Both of our children are infants. My husband and I are very lucky that we're financially secure and that our combined income is in the mid 6 figures. Daisy and her husband are not and most of our other friends are not as well. Now that I'm back at work, I decided that it was also time to get back to a routine somewhat close to my old one. I didn't want to be the kind of woman who only defines herself as a mother, and there's nothing wrong with that, and, as I said, I have the means to help with that. We hired an au pair, and it's been life-changing. I still spend a lot of time being a mom, and I love my daughter, but now I get to go to the gym, I'm rested because I don't have to be up with her at night, I can go to brunch with my friends, and last Saturday, I even went clubbing. I didn't drink since I breastfeed, but I still had fun with my friends. On the other hand, Daisy is exhausted and hasn't had the time to go out with us. Very understandable, so we made sure to visit her. And the one time she agreed to go to brunch, we made sure to choose a child-friendly restaurant. After seeing some photos we posted on social media of us enjoying the club, she sent a text in the group chat asking why we didn't invite her. 
Another friend said she was invited, but she declined since she couldn't spend that much time away from her son. Then Daisy said that we should have done what she suggested instead, which was to have a nice dinner at a family-friendly restaurant, then just spend a couple of hours at home chatting. The same friend replied that we did that last weekend and that they wanted to have fun. Daisy said that it wasn't fair that she was excluded for being a mom, but the same friend replied that she wasn't and that she was being dramatic. Then she said if we were excluding moms, my name would have been excluded too. Daisy then calls me. As soon as I picked up, she started scolding me about giving our friends a false idea of what being a mom is, that most of them do not have the means to hire help the way I do, that normal people have to sacrifice a lot of things once they have kids, and that me not having to do that makes her seem like a bad friend and stops our other friends from accommodating her. At the time, I didn't know what the whole deal was about, but I could kind of understand the situation, so I told her that normal moms leave their kids with their fathers to go out with their friends. It was entitled people who expected the whole world to change because they decided to have kids. After reading the whole argument on the group chat, though, I think that I went overboard and that I really might be doing exactly what she accused me of. So, am I the idiot? Not the idiot. The world isn't fair. It's a bummer for Daisy that she can't afford to hire help, but she still chose to have a kid. The group isn't excluding her, especially if they occasionally accommodate her motherhood. Of course, the group dynamics were going to change. She can't honestly expect that a mostly child-free group is suddenly going to want to only socialize around breastfeeding schedules and baby-friendly themes. Yeah, she's also probably more than a little jealous that you have the means to acquire help and get some of your life back. It sounds like maybe the father isn't stepping in or she's putting too much of the care of the little one on herself and is starting to crumble under pressure, and you got the brunt that day. Everybody sucks here. You headed right into idiot territory with that comment, especially the normal moms. That was a crappy thing to say to a friend of yours. But, on the other hand, your friend shouldn't be blaming you for your parenting choices. So there's that. Frankly, I find it odd that nine friends are finding time to do something every weekend, but you can't find time for her.